back again with another fresh cut. You are now tuned into the underground. My name is Mbaya. I go by the doctor. If you are not subscribed to this channel yet, you need to do that ASAP. Today, what I have for you is a burst taper on a, I guess, crop top. Usually what we do for him is this, but today we are going to switch it up. I'm going to do something different. He wanted to start growing out the sides and around the back. So we're going to go ahead and just kind of tame a little bit of everything that's grown out. He usually just keeps a clean shave on his face. He gets a little bit of hair that does grow. So he did clean it up himself already and left just enough hair right at the taper area. So anyway, look, what we are going to do first is establish the bald guideline for the taper and i'm going to just of course get that in there make sure it's symmetrical simple stuff real easy i'm going to do a full length haircut by the way so this is going to run about 30 minutes y'all and after i'm done establishing the ball guideline i'm going to go ahead and use my shaver right at the bottom and get all of that bald completely. I'm going to do some clipper over comb technique using my Stylecraft Rebel and of course my level three comb. Level three has some amazing stuff, y'all. If you're not using them, you need to get on it ASAP. So I'm gonna go ahead with my clipper lever open all the way and make sure that I create that second guideline symmetrical right in that nape area. Immediately after the guideline is set in place, I'm going to close the lever halfway and start to erase that bottom line slowly, then close all the way to start completely removing the line. This is why I love Stylecraft. Stylecraft makes cutting fun and easy because you see the process right away. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use my 1.5 from wall and start to remove a little bit of that weight. This is a good guard to use just to kind of establish a decent amount of bulk removal. At the same time, it's cleaning up just the right amount because we gotta keep this tight and clean. I'm gonna use other guards, but for now we're gonna use the 1.5 and I'm gonna go ahead with the wall one guard open, of course, and start to close it halfway immediately after I establish that invisible guideline, kind of just softening up that line and I'll close it immediately, of course, and make sure that we start to erase every weight line that is in place. If you don't know my routine by now, if you don't know the standard of cutting hair, it all consists of open, closing, halfway, of course, and closing all the way and the in-between of those different levels. So now what I am using, of course, just for detail, is my 0.5 guard from wall. If you don't have this, if you don't have this, I repeat, get you one. They don't cost much. On Amazon, you could probably get it right now, especially with all these deals during the holidays going on. This thing's probably like $2, maybe it's $4 even. But with shipping, who knows? You know what I'm saying? You could probably get that right down the street at a Sally or other stores that do supply these type of items. What I can't wait for is for Stylecraft to, of course, release their new guard system from the Cyborg lineup with the trimmer and the clipper, but the Cyborg's clippers, I would love to have, I would love, I repeat, to have those guards right now. So I can retire my wall guards, which is gonna be probably impossible to do because I do lean on my wall guards a lot. Anyway, pretty much right now, all I'm doing is detailing making sure that I am removing all that weight that has been set in from creating the guidelines, of course. Then as you can see, I'm moving over to 
the right side of the head. Just a FYI for those of you who don't know, but when setting in a low taper, you gotta use the corner of the eye to make sure you keep it symmetrical, just a FYI. But we're going to establish a mid taper, which we're gonna pretty much burst out. So by setting the guideline by the eyebrow is how you do that. So I'm gonna kind of arch this, kind of create a small circle-like guideline ball that out and i'm going to keep a little bit of that tip or that corner of the sideburn just to keep some overhang which will help me manipulate the lineup later if you don't know about this this is something that i do regularly i like to make sure i save overhang regardless to whatever the texture i'm going to keep some kind of overhang as long as the hair allows it when it comes to that manipulation of the line i do that for sure it's one of my favorite signature ways of giving that enhanced look. Now with the clipper lever open on my Rebel, I'm going in with the second guideline, of course, about a inch. So most of my guidelines, I go up about an inch. If I have to make them a half inch, cool. And I'm setting all my guidelines, just establishing them. So I'm gonna go in with the 1.5, which will make sure to remove a lot of that weight, debulking it, because I want to keep it dark. So I usually would go in with the one, but in this case, due to the texture and the look that I'm going for, we're going to go with 1.5. Up next, of course, we're going to do the two. I'm staying consistent with the wall guard system. Now, I'm using the wall guard system for this video, if you haven't picked up on that. Use the two guard. Clipper lever open, of course, just establishing my guides in. And of course, with the three guard, just making sure I establish all the guides. Another thing that you should know is use the corners. You see how I'm rocking back and forth, just demonstrating how I'm doing this. So it seems as if I'm using the blade flat or the clipper flat, but I'm actually rocking it using the corners as I go into the hair, I guide it in the way that the hair flows because the same thing even when I tuck the ear down and cut behind the ear, just follow the flow of the hair because this right side of the head, the way it grows, if you haven't checked this out, you see the hair flows downward, then curves back, if that makes any sense. So. If you see how I'm combing and how I'm cutting, and I'm just following the flow of the hair. So I'm going to go ahead and jump back to my two guard. I've already established the clipper lever open, so I'm gonna close it halfway and start working my way down. And I'm gonna close it completely as I keep on working my way down. So now we're getting into the blending out of the guidelines making sure everything's smoothed out. And I will go right back to my 1.5 clipper lever closed halfway because we've already established the open. So we're going to close halfway and immediately after I soften up everything on that line, I will close completely, of course, and keep on working my way down. So the best way for me that I love to do when I blend is create my guidelines with the clipper lever open with each comb attachment, as well as when it's no guard, then start to work my way down by closing. And you know, simple as that. So I'm with my one guard now, I'm using my one guard, clipper lever close halfway, and I will close completely and remove the line and start to use those in between spaces or click spaces that I haven't used to make sure that I am erasing those weight lines, those guidelines that were created to establish the shape of the taper. So this is like a burst taper or a blowout taper. So we're making sure it's blurry. So I'm gonna do some stretching of the skin and I'm gonna use my protege clipper and no guard, just doing some detail, making sure I'm um, taking advantage of that floating lever. That floating lever is 
definitely a must in your arsenal. If you're not using a floating lever, you need to get on that ASAP. A lot of people don't even know what a floating lever is compared to a click lever. Most people know what a click lever is for real, as well as the floating lever, but you need to make sure you're aware of what it is because you don't know what you're missing. You really don't, you know? This is what makes cutting easy and you definitely go through a lot of bulk or weight easy. So I'm pretty much just detailing with this. I'm using my 0.5 guard right now, as you can see, making sure that I'm smoothing everything out. Real simple, easy, going with the grain. Again, I'm following the flow of the hair. You're starting to see this hair really reveal itself. Now, as you can see, the way the hair curves, see that? It goes downward then back. And that's everybody, literally everyone's lineup in the flow of the hair is challenging due to the fact that the way the hair flows is challenging establishing the line. So right now I'm just going through with the one guard, kind of removing a little bit of that weight. Like I said, he's making sure to grow everything out along the side. So I can't remove any of that weight. He wants to have all of that going on with the back. So anybody that's judging my blend job, the haircut in general, hey, look, <laughs> click away, swipe away from this video, move on to the next. This is not for you. This is for those who appreciate this type of look. This look is not for everybody. And if how I'm executing this is not ideal to you, please move on. I would appreciate some constructive criticism, but I don't even wanna hear that. Because in this case, this is what my guy wants. This is a client's preference. And if I'm going about this too slow or going about this in a way that you don't appreciate, I'm sorry. Real simple, do yourself a favor and just don't comment, don't like, don't dislike, just move on because this video is not for you. I didn't make this for you. This is for my people that are wanting to learn to do better. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and establish my line around the ear using my Rebel Trimmer, of course, on the right side. So make sure you're holding that ear down. There's different ways you can go about this. You can hold it this way from the top side, I am a righty, so this is very good for me and it's not comfortable for everybody. So there's definitely different ways to do this. And I wanted you to see what I am doing because I didn't want to be in the shot of the camera. So I had to do it that way. Next, I'm going to go in with my protege trimmer. It is fully upgraded with a gold titanium deep tooth cutter blade. Making sure I use that comb because of the texture of the hair. Make sure I'm pulling out all those stray hairs, which were missed the first time. I'm gonna go back in and make sure I establish a clean line consistently all the way through, leaving no extra hair hanging you gotta make sure you get everything so right now i'm using my protege trimmer of course this is my trusty my go-to all my trimmers are my go-to's depending on the job that i'm doing they are all my go-to's these things are on point i'm using this of course gold titanium x pro with the black diamond carbon deep tooth cutter. This thing is perfect when it comes to precision as far as getting very precise, very tight areas where the, the hair is shorter, of course, but having a blade such as this in your arsenal is key. It is a must. And it's definitely always polishing up everything that was left behind from making all the passes with the Rebel, for example. The Rebel is a beast, but this is another beast. And I like to combine different trimmers to make sure that everything's on point. So I'm establishing my C cup now, since I have everything around the ear done, making sure I use those two fingers, resting them on the cheek area, making sure I'm completing a full circle all the way through as I established that C cup. When it comes to that lineup, 
I'm telling you, I show out. So I hope y'all taking notes. You know, you got to make sure you're using that knuckle placement. It's all about finger placement when you're getting the vertical bar. Like in this case, we're kind of going about this unorthodox. I started off with a C cup first and I moved on to the vertical bar. Then I'm going to establish the straightaway just at the corner. We're not going to go deep in the front part of the hairline because he keeps this for the most part natural. He doesn't like the full line in the front. That's not for everybody. Remember that. I know a lot of people like to clown how barbers love to line up everything. Sometimes people get real racial with it and start saying that is a particular race as in black folks or black people hairline. Pretty much saying black people want to line up everything. Yo, chill out. <laughs> In 2023, 2024, moving forward, even in the last several years, if you're stuck saying that a lineup or edge up is only meant for people of color, black people, I don't know what you have going on. That's one thing I really despise talking about is color or race. It's ridiculous what some people get into. I'm gonna cut it at that. I'm not even gonna get it. That's crazy, but look at that. Clean, super fresh, super tight. That's exquisite. I'm definitely gonna get my guy in trouble with this haircut. I really hope he's ready because I hope he knows what he's doing with the taper. I mean, that blowout, when done right, sheesh. Man, need I say more? Look at that. All we need to do is more details. I mean, my goodness. Sometimes I wish when I did my self cuts that I can just kind of unscrew my head off the shoulders, you know, and just set it on the table or chair or something, you know, countertop and just go in because it's hard to find a good barber and i wish i could be my own barber which i am my own barber it's just i can't stand being in front of that mirror i really can't do it but anyway go ahead and get back into this haircut i'm renting you know i'm calling off as i usually do but yeah we're going ahead and making sure that my guy's mustache is established and taken care of it's really all he has to work with right now because the hair that he does grow on the sides of his cheek area and the jaw area, he shaves it off. He doesn't like how that comes in because it's not a full mature beard. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of do an edit cut and just switch over to the other side because I didn't have time to try to rotate him and start dragging my camera around. Y'all know how I rock. I just do what I do, but hey, y'all already know at this point that ain't no gimmicks, ain't no tricks going on. If you trust my work, you trust my work. If you appreciate my judgment and the work that I produce, cool. But anyway, so the flow of the hair on the left side is definitely different from the right. It flows forward on a slight angle and is most people's best side. As before, establishing the low taper, use the corner of the eye. When getting that mid taper, make sure you establish it by pointing out where the eyebrow is and going ahead and making sure you measure with that. And I'm keeping just a little bit of that hook on the sideburn, just making sure I keep just enough for the C cup, just to establish that 3D enhanced look. You feel me? So going in with my clipper lever open all the way for the no guard to create a half. And I'm gonna do that same thing with the one guard and I'm going to do the same thing again with the 1.5. Going back in with the 1.5, making sure the clipper lever, that clipper lever should always stay open when you're establishing these guidelines. You don't always have to do it this way. Make sure you improvise, be the judge, be sure to do what works. So I'm with the two guard now, clipper lever open. Remove some of that weight, that bulk. You see what's going on, right? I'm making sure I'm following all the steps. Take your time. You should never rush a blurry taper, a blurry fade, blend whatsoever. Then I'll jump in with the three simple steps. Three guard, of course, clipper lever open, get that in there, work it, you know, keep flicking. It's all about using those corners, rock that clipper back and forth. 
All right, follow the flow of the hair. Make sure to not skip any steps, which of course with each guard, you make sure that you open all the way, close halfway, then you close all the way, blend out everything. Don't skip any steps. I was gonna do a two part video. And of course I'm on the two guard now. I went from the three, now I'm with the two guard. But like I say, open all the way, halfway closed, then close. As I was going to say, I was going to do a full, just focus on the right side of the head. And I decided to do that edit cut, which I didn't want to do and go ahead and do a full service just to show you both sides on how you go about each side. So how you go about each side is definitely important on how you do it and the routine. So. As you can see, I'm just doing the same thing I did on the right side. I go in with the three, two, 1.5, the one, and of course, no guard. And of course, establish the zero guard as well, making sure everything is blended out. So I'm just blending my way up. Well, I'm creating my guidelines going up with the clipper lever open with, with each level as an no guard, half guard, you know, or 0 0.5, uh, one, two, three, right? That's how I blend out. I'm not trying to confuse you, but it's just, you create your guidelines with the open lever, with each number. And as you work your way down each number, you close halfway and close all the way. If that makes any sense, you can run this video back. You can watch this video without audio, without my direction, which it, it can be, I know my, <laughs> it can be confusing. You know, some people have said in my videos before on the comment section saying it's too many lines. Well, it's not for you. If you want detailed cuts that you want to get paid for, you gotta do these steps, all right? You gotta follow through. I don't know any other way to tell you, but anyway, I'm gonna start working around the ear, you know, kind of just remove a little bit of that weight making sure I'm going with the grain, going against the grain, doing whatever it is that I gotta do to make sure that I remove that weight. So if I gotta use the one, the 1 1.5, the two, the three, go for it. And this hair slightly grows different on the left side. Like I say, on this side, the hair flows more forward straightforward pretty much for the most part it doesn't have that bend or curve like the right side all it is is a slight angle literally so just make sure you follow through with it and as always i usually start with the nape or around the ear working my way down to the nape so i start off at the very end or beginning of the line at the taper area on top of the ear right at the front, then start to work my way down the side of the neck, all the way down to the nape. Don't rush, take your time, do not rush. It's a process. If you want perfection or close to perfect, if you want exquisite work, you want quality, take your time. In this case, comb, over and over and over. If you're brushing, brush over and over and over. Brushing usually is a good way of dusting the hair away, but using the comb reveals all. So that way when your person, your client, your customer, whatever you call them, your guest leaves and goes home when they shampoo, after making all these passes, you're gonna appreciate your work and how they appreciate your work based off of you taking your time. Never rush a service. If you're rushing your service, you're not going to produce the best of work. Unless you have those regulars that come in all the time and they have very basic and easy haircuts. Basic is a wrong choice of words because some people take basic as an offense, but basic work as in just your regular cut, you know, a formal cut, you know, for a better, you know, choice of words, I guess, but it's, it's just everything sensitive nowadays. But anyway, moving forward, I'm working on the C cup. Make sure that finger placement's on point. Keep it right by the cheek. You can always use that eyebrow socket area too. It's a good area to use as a guide 
of how you make that perfect C cup. As you can see, that thing looks 3D, it looks enhanced. A lot of people knock me for the way that I cut, but it's just, this is my style. I go for a particular look. I want my work to look enhanced when I establish the lineup, especially. This looks enhanced. You cannot act as if everything you see on your feed. Okay, now pay attention, follow me closely. Your feed has all these enhanced cuts all over. You can't say that what I'm doing is not great work because some people always say, you're not doing anything special. Why? Because I'm supposed to be doing this anyway, but you don't see that many barbers taking in that information and applying it to their work as in, oh, we're supposed to do natural cuts very well, then we can enhance. Well, establish your base cut, establish your base work. Your, your, your work needs to be on point in order for you to use enhancements. You just don't jump to enhancements. This is why I don't post enhancements, but I'm very close to just demonstrating in one video at some point how you should apply, how you should use them, because somebody's gotta show this whole process on how it's done from a, a natural expert or, you know, barber's perspective, because I really focus on natural cuts. Natural cuts is my specialty. I don't knock the enhancements or beat them down to the point where it's just, I despise them or I hate them. It's like, no, it's just abuse. It's an obsession literally only used to cover up mistakes. The abuse of enhancements is what gets on my nerves. So as you can see, my guy here, looks really really fresh all i'm doing at this point is just applying some detail on the line making sure everything from around the ear to the temple the vertical bar all of that the c cup is fresh you know and he did want to design so i went ahead and did a little quick freestyle for him in the nape area and i should have used the one blade on this design because the blade that I ended up using is the one on my protege, of course, that good old deep tooth cutter. Of course, you know, that that joint, that carbon, that black diamond, that carbon, it, it's, it's good. It's just not meant for certain areas like the nape, for example. It tends to be really sharp and precise um, with the, the cut that it produces it has people welt. So one thing I've discovered is the one blade doesn't have you welt. And that's why I'm starting to fall in love with it because it doesn't have people welt at all. Like it's kind of mad. It's crazy how that thing works, but I love it. You know, it's amazing. So I should have definitely used it, but I went ahead and just executed that quick little artwork for him real fast. It worked out pretty well. It was fair, but keep in mind, if you don't have the one blade, get you the one blade. That joint is everything. It is worth every penny, I promise you. So if you don't have that, hey, look, all the tools, everything that I use, I will link in the video description below. I have my storefront for Amazon. I'll keep my Stylecraft and Gamma discount code in the description. You can find it on my profile as well as Exquisite. Use that code for all these different tools that I use. If you're interested, go for it. Use discount code Exquisite, And that's a good way to support me and it will help me out tremendously to help keep bringing out more visuals as far as content that consists of reviews and different haircuts because if you support hey i'm able to produce the work you know if i don't get support then i really won't be able to do too much because i love teaching i love to share what i know or what i learned over the journey over time you know i want you to all pick up on these things so you can do the job easier and better than me because that's the whole point of these videos being put out there it's not for me to just flex my skill this and that and talk best over a video that i 
rant off and say who knows what on. You know, I just hope people are finding this information informative. I hope this video is very helpful and insightful in, in any way, you know, like if it is, leave a comment, you know, share it. Subscribe to this channel. Like I post these types of videos all the time. If you're new to this page, if you watch this far into the video, make sure that you subscribe and stay tuned because look, this journey on here is giving you a beginner experience into advancing over time. What I am trying to accomplish here is showing you the Miyagi way of cutting hair. I'm going to give you the ugly, grimy side that most don't like to talk about. That what they consider started from the bottom, which most people didn't start from the bottom. They don't know what the bottom is for real. You don't know what cutting in a 10 degree garage feels like with a space heater. Not a propane heater at that. <laughs> Rough. Doesn't make me any much better than anybody. I'm just saying like that grind is serious having to provide for your family, your brothers, your sisters, is a different story, but that's another day. We can get into that later. And I'm just spraying a little bit of water on the back of the nape area, because like I say, he did welt up quite a bit. So I wanted to kind of make sure I didn't do this detail work with the blade dry. I don't mind dry shaves or dry you know, detail work with the, with the, with the razor, but get you that one blade. You need that in your life. And I wouldn't be having this problem if I would have used that, but it's something that I've been trying to get myself to come around to because it's a different kind of blade and you have to learn your blades. There's a lot of tools that are nice and shiny and look amazing and they're really cool. Everybody's talking about them, but these tools are pricey and everyone can't use them. So you gotta really be careful, be mindful of the tools you're purchasing to use on your clients. And if your clients are saying you should get that one new this, new that, don't do it. Because if it's one or two people saying that, that doesn't mean it's a great idea. And doesn't mean that it's gonna automatically get you people. There are tools that get you people automatically, but that doesn't work the same for everybody because you gotta be able to follow through with that skill set. You know, so real quick, hey, look, I uh, pretty much have this haircut all wrapped up. I'm just pretty much trying to kind of do some detail work. Like I said, I hope you found this video informative. In any way, I'm going to try to get you a video that shows him coming back to do some detail on the length of the hair. We're gonna have to trim that down because I'm not gonna do any trimming today. I'm just going to make sure that everything is pretty much prepped for his next cut. His next cut will be like a touch up, but we'll have to make sure we establish a good level around the sides, especially that top because he has a lot of fringe going on. When it's styled like this, it looks great. When it's not styled like this, it looks mad wild. So definitely gotta uh, be mindful of how you style the hair or how you cut the hair for people because some of these haircuts that are trending or popular nowadays are not for everyone to maintain. Like this haircut right here, he can maintain it because he knows how to style it when he's on his own. I don't have to do much for him, but there's people that tend to get these type of haircuts and get upset because it's hard and difficult for them to maintain. Well, that's why it is important to keep your hair trained. Stay in the shop. Like, for example, I keep on saying he's going to have to come back so we can trim and do all these extra details because this haircut has just been established for the first time. We just pretty much got him right. And usually when you switch it up compared to what you're usually wearing, the whole integrity of the hair, the whole shape of it changes and how you go about it, your lifestyle, the hats that you want to put on, it all changes. I've had people get upset at me before when they have locks and they want to switch it up to 
oh, I like the locks all the way around my head, but let's go ahead and establish a undercut. I want to fade now so you can cut a few locks out. Okay. We cut the locks out. They come back. I didn't really like the cut. It doesn't look good. It doesn't feel right. You know what? I'm going to unravel them and then you can cut it again. Why would you want to do that within a month? Like, some people that come through weekly, just like, for example, with the locks, or if they just have longer hair at the top and undercut, they switch it up and they don't like it. And they switch it up again and still don't like it. <laughs> it, it, it's, it all depends if they did that undercut or not. You know, they come back with an undercut from, you know, locks all over the head to locks only on top, like I say before, and they get upset. Now they want me to cut it all the way down. When I cut it all the way down, their hair looks mad, wild, and just crazy. Now they want me to fix that. And it's like, no, we can't fix it. You're doing too much to your hair. You're altering it way too much. So I'm no help. There's a lot of training that goes into hair. That's why the saying goes, good haircuts are not cheap. Just a FYI, this is not GTA. It's not 2K. You can't just customize a haircut and think it's all going to be just fine. You're bugging. Okay. Now with that being said, I'm not going to get too much into that, that, that whole quote, but bad haircuts last longer than good haircuts. It's just the truth. And I've said that before. If you haven't heard me say that before, bad haircuts last longer than good haircuts. Good haircuts grow back sooner than the bad. And that is what a good haircut should be because you will be upset if you were walking around with a bad haircut and it grew back in and it looked crazy. Do yourself a favor, know the difference between being a picky client and just being problematic. That's what gets you written off your barber's clientele list. So just be cool and trust your barber or stylist judgment and barbers listen to your client. Just because you're a professional does not mean you can't get fired. Seriously. Anyway, I'll catch y'all on the next one.